Welcome back everyone. Today we're going over the EOTech 553 holographic sight. Now this optic probably five or six years ago was selected as the uh, optic of choice for the SOTMOD 2 program that our military was running. So you see a lot of guys overseas running these optics. Now since then some lessons have been learned with the optic and some improvements have been made. But what we're going to do today is go over this optic since it's still being made, still being produced. And um, let you know what I think of it, pros and the cons, and that'll pretty much do it. But without any more gabbing, let's get into the optic. Taking a closer look here at the optic, one thing I want to point out is the reticle. Folks who like EOTechs really love that reticle. It's one MOA dot surrounded by the 65 MOA ring. And while it does look kind of fuzzy as you're looking at it, and it does in person when you look at it, when you look through it, i.e. when you're looking at your target through the optic, it does look clear, and that's the way it's designed. Uh, it is parallax free, as you see we move it around here but the dot would stay on the target regardless of your head position. The optic weighs 12 ounces and is powered by two CR123 batteries. And if you ever hear anything bad about EOTechs out there on the internet, usually one thing you're gonna hear is the failings of the batteries. Now, on a 5.56-223 uh, rifle, probably very unlikely that you'll ever run into it, but a lot of folks who were testing these out when they were uh, developing for the SOTMOD uh, program found out that on the SCAR Heavy with that uh, 7.62 caliber cartridge, the recoil there was causing these optics to fail due to the, partly due to the way the batteries were oriented uh, in line with the barrel. So on the newer updates like the XPS3 for instance, uh, they're now uh, perpendicular to the barrel. Operation of the optic is pretty straightforward. To turn it on, you just go ahead and hit the arrow button right here and your reticle will appear. To switch over to night vision view, you hit the NV labeled button right here and to come back into daylight mode you just hit that button again to uh, go down, hit the button over here on the left in terms of brightness and to increase the brightness out there on a bright sunny day, press the button over there on the right. There are 30 different modes for the optic itself. The 553 does have an auto shutdown feature as well. You can either set it up for four or eight hours to shut down automatically. And when the battery gets low as well, it does have a way of letting you know that when you turn it on, the reticle there will blink um, indicating that the battery is low. Windage and elevation adjustment points are on the right side of the optic and are adjustable by 0.5 MOA increments. The 553 comes with the arms levers integral to the optic itself and it allows for mounting onto any sort of 1913 style rail. You just line it up, push them down, and secure it uh, to your rail. It does offer um, one MOA uh, return to zero as they claim. I found that to be true. It does return to zero, um, at least on the guns I've tried it on. That said, some folks in the past have reported issues with the uh, arms mounts not really securing the rails tight enough and have had to send them back to EOTech. I've not had that problem, but just something to look out for. Um, also, these mounts do raise the optic up uh, 7 millimeters from the rail itself to allow for a one-third lower coat witness. Even with some of the issues that have been discovered since it's been fielded in mass by uh, Special Operations Command, it's still a good optic. Uh, nowadays, the XPS-3 has sort of been a replacement for it, but this one's still being produced uh, by EOTech and it's still out there on the market. These are coming to market new, somewhere in the six to $700 range, but in the used market, there are a lot of them coming out now that the XPS-3 is out to replace it, so a lot of folks are selling these off and you can get them out there for a pretty good price. So. That's why we're doing the review today, to let you guys know what you're getting there. But again, they're still new and uh, still being produced if you want a new one. Those are an option as well. Um, if you're running on a 5.56 or 223 AR, you're probably going to be well served by it. It'll probably do a good job, last a long time, and uh, be just fine. Now, there are the chance in the reports that the arms lovers um, have been an issue. Like I said, I've never experienced that, so I can only go off what I know. That said, if you're going to be running like an AR-10 or a scar heavy, I'd probably look elsewhere due to the way the batteries are oriented and the possible issues that could come up there. But if you guys have any questions about this optic, anything else I talk about here on the channel, you can always post below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page if you guys don't have a YouTube account. But thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.